It's time to talk sports. It's time for the show. When you hear this song on the radio, it's time to tune in. Better act fast. Let me get that part of Potograph Sports Talk Radio. Starting now. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 191 of Let Me Get That Potograph. As always, my name is Drew, or the DH, and joining me, my awesome co-host, Mr. Scott Rappaport. What's up, dude? Oh, uh, you know what? It, it's been a uh, it's been, it's been, an been interesting a week. week. It's been a week. <laughs> you know, a lot of lot of shit going on. Um, yep. You know, delayed recording for a little while just because I know you had a you had a surprise trip that. Uh, yeah. Well, we both got older. We both had birthdays. Yeah, so, exactly. Mean, so, yeah. Um, difference is you or. you celebrate yours. I hate mine. So, <laughs> Why? Well, uh, I, I didn't do much. So, yeah. Well, here's the here's the thing. I've got a history of having really bad birthdays dating back to when Me I was too. a kid. And I made the I made the choice a long time ago that I can never be disappointed on my birthday if I just straight up don't celebrate it. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's what I've chosen to do. And there's mm-hmm. people. Uh, there's people that respect that. There's people that insist on not respecting that. And those right? are the yeah. people that, you know, really piss me off. And <laughs> I look, honestly, if there wasn't, if there wasn't a huge crowd of people where I was on the third mm-hmm. um, and the same people pulled the crap that they did, good chance I'd probably be in jail right now. <laughs> All right. So you did have a heck of one. Well, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll wish you a happy belated birthday. Thank you. You know, it is on the same day you steal my thunder everywhere. Apparently, I think I sent you my t- I, I typically send the birthday meme out to people. I'm pretty sure I sent you one, didn't I? Yeah, I believe so. OK, yeah. good. Yeah. Good. I believe so. Yeah. And- I hope everybody is doing well. We have an absolutely jam packed show for you guys today. Um, Scott, let's go on and kick it off, man. We got a little bit of an update. <laughs> and I wish it was a good one, but we got an update from a little segment we had last week. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's- so last week we talked about the second one of one Lamar Jackson shield auto that, uh, that popped up uh, out of a box. And this week we have an update, not on that exact card. Like we haven't figured out what happened in that card. No, no, still no clue on that. No. But there is a second one of one non auto Lamar Jackson shield that from has, National Treasures. From National Treasures that has also popped up. Now, yes. We, yes. So this is the tremendous material, the tremendous treasures, excuse me, the tremendous treasures set, which is a memorabilia only set. And after the Lamar Jackson 101 NT was pulled, obviously people started going back and looking at all of his NT stuff. The blowout detectives did. And they found two one-of-one NFL shields, one graded by PSA and one graded by Beckett. One was sold on Golden, one was sold on eBay. But two of these that are 100% different cards, I'll get into how in just a moment, both one-of-ones, both stamped one-of-ones, are now both out there as well. All right, so you mentioned it a second ago, we do know that these are two different cards Yes, these are not, you know, it's not the same card that got graded with Beckett and then cracked and graded with PSA and then resold again. This is a the shields in the card are two completely different shields. They're two complete. They're from two completely different jerseys. One's got the Nike uh, fly wire, you know, when they had that those little stripes on the jersey next to the shield. The other one, it looks to be the rubber shield post fly wrap. So it it's two completely different jerseys, 100%. Right. And now we also know within that subset, there are a couple of different one of ones. There's, yes. there's usually one shield. There's usually mm-hmm. one Nike swoosh. And there's usually one laundry tag. Yep. Has anybody seen the swoosh or the laundry tag? Yeah. Now that you brought that up when we were talking about this pre-show. And that's yeah. what I want to know. Because the Nike swoosh, I don't see you changing that one nike no. holds up pretty pretty well when it comes to the nike swoosh but the laundry tags those always sell for lower than the shields and the nikes right if that laundry tag has been pulled i want to see it now i want to see it right now not i want not only do i want to know if it's been pulled but i want the owner to show it yep. because i want to know if they swap that out yeah show it and then obviously coin it because, yes. you know, that's, you know, 
you know, I hate coining, but in this situation, it's like, you know, yeah. you know, you're pro- I would do a video. look, you're I, proven, I you're proven video. somebody's still alive by holding up today's newspaper, yeah. you know, in, in a picture. Yeah. That, that's really what the coin is. So let's just, yeah, let's just, there's a good chance that that's what happened with this one until, until I have we feeling. see, until we see the laundry tag version, there's a good chance in which case it's not on Panini. Right. You know, no, it's, it's not on Panini if no. it's been swapped. No, if it hasn't been swapped, on the other hand, then that's yeah. a whole other issue. And when you have, and, and that question has to be posed when you have, when you've already seen one duplicate one of one from the exact same yes. hand collated set. Exactly. Now, here's the other. Here's the other thing. So the second one, the one that has, you know, the rubberized shield. Yeah. That you know, it's more commonly in use now. If you can date that that would show that it had to have been swapped because that type of shield was not available in 2018. Yep. So you now have, you know, somewhat definitive proof that it was swapped. The question is, what was it swapped with? Yeah. Um, Because again, you know, there might be somebody out there that's trying to find the, you know, and it'll call it the rainbow, the one of one rainbow from that set. (laughs) And now all of a sudden they're going to be pissed because they can't get their hands on the, on the laundry tag because it's not there anymore. No, I, I agree. And this is why I saw a photo. I, I believe it was the, it's a Connor McDavid rookie Jersey um, set that upper deck put out and someone had been tracking it. I know like uh, there's a lot of people that track the RPAs and stuff to get from the Well, especially from the cup. Right. Yes. Yeah. And they had put together all night, all 99 of these cards in one photo. So you could see every patch. And so you had a database to know if it was ever patch swapped. This well, I'm pretty stuff- sure. Well, hold on. Before you before you finish that one, um, I believe that was the year that Upper Deck released the pictures of all 99. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think I think they did actually release it ahead of time, probably knowing after seeing Crosby and everything with yeah. so many patch swaps, probably knowing why. But this is one of those things that I think companies, if not collectors, there needs to be a record of this with so many of this stuff getting broke on camera. Nowadays, especially national treasures. Now, there's no way to. I, I don't want to track all the Phoenix out of 199s. No, no, you no, know, no. napkin bullshit. But when it comes to high end products and stuff like this, we a database of this stuff or yeah. pictures from the card companies. I think they need to take the inventory of what those patches are because then you could straight up look. See, okay, this wasn't supposed to be in there. Maybe they had him try on two different types of jerseys for this. I don't, these obviously aren't game used. They're rookie yeah. relics and treasures. So he could have tried on thousands of different types of jerseys, but I I don't see him using two different in the set. I don't know. This seems like a patch swap to me with the laundry tag. I just want to see if the laundry tag's been pulled, if it's been sold, who it was sold to, you know, track that provenance and see. Yeah. See but here's a is. and here's the thing: any of the products that are hand collated and hand packed, National yeah. Treasures, Flawless, I believe Immaculate, Mac- is yes, also, Immaculate is. As I say, with you know, with Panini, obviously Upper Deck with the Cup, they actually do a pretty good job tracking those. Um, Dynasty with right, uh, although Dynasty, it's in you know, if it's not graded, it's going to be in theory in a sealed one touch. Yes. So yeah. it's not, you know, that that one's a little bit a little bit tougher to, you know, yeah. to get away with doing. Just like Panini 1 or something like that. Exactly. Well. Yeah. But anything that's hand collated, they're putting those together in the office. Yeah. And not by the way, not the office that got robbed. <laughs> um no. the other yeah, the other office. Yeah. Um they're putting they're putting those products together there. It is very easy for them to get and they don't have to do it with every single player. They no. you know, have to do it with like the top, you know, the top people, the top, you know, 10% maybe yeah. take all of those cards and photo inventory, photo inventory. Now here's the, here's the tricky part though. Some of the cards have the serial number stamp on the back. Yeah. So it's tough to tell when, you know, when you have it on the back like that, which patch goes with which serial number. Yes. Yeah. Now, I do believe on National Treasures and Flawless, they're all on the front, but I could be wrong. Some could be on the back. Um, But like you said, that would be difficult. You just have to inventory the front and the back. But I think this this stuff definitely needs to be tracked. I'm glad it is to an extent, but I think it needs to be tracked more by the card companies because this is a commonly known thing. 
I mean, there's guys out there now that can, can take a card from National Treasures like Reclaim Customs, for example. They can take a card that's been burnt and set on fire and in two days have it look exactly like the card that was just done. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it, it, It's amazing what people can do nowadays when it comes to custom cards. And there's nothing wrong with custom cards. It's not where I'm getting at. What I'm saying is when it comes to wanting to do something nefarious with it, when it comes to wanting to do a patch swap, wanting to do something like that, it's not as difficult as it was 10 years ago. They no, but even – but even let's go back – go back to 07, 08 uh, yeah. when, the, you know, when the cup came out. God, you um, make me feel old now. Fuck. Well, I know. I know. But uh, there were – like Patrick Kane was obviously the, the big draw in that right. one. And there were, there were a lot of napkin patches that popped out on his cup RPA. Oh, yes. And there were a lot – and you can always tell – which ones were swapped? Yeah, because the idiots that swapped them put like eight color patches. In. No, 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 no. The, actually, the, there is one spot on the Blackhawks patch where you can get seven colors. I know, I know. Um, but what they did was they didn't realize that the game jerseys, the player issued jerseys, and that kind of stuff, the stitching on the crest and on the shoulder yep. patches, completely different, are completely different than the stitching on the patches that you can buy at retail. Right. And you can always tell. Now, don't get me wrong. You could still go buy an authentic jersey at the time. You were just paying like 500 bucks for it. Yeah. The but for, and I don't know why someone didn't do that. You know, they didn't they yeah. must not have realized it. they would take, you know, the hundred dollar retail jersey and yeah. cut the piece of the piece of the crest off to put as many colors in there as possible and put that into the card to replace a single color patch. Yeah. I have I've actually seen more fakes. And swapped out patches than I've seen real ones. And that's the well, you, you know, the same with curry, same with the curry RPAs, the exquisites and stuff like that. That there's so many that are tracked. Uh Wax Museum does a wonderful job of tracking the NBA stuff. And and hit the curries, I there I think there are more that have been proven to be swapped out out of like the 25 version and the the 49s than yeah. there are actual ones that are legit out there. So the, I think that's what happened here. I would guess the Flywire one was prop. No, well, the non-Flywire one is probably the one that was swapped. Yeah, because, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Because and now, granted, these are just photos, but it does look like the rubberized shield. It does look like that new shield that would not that was on the Flywire, but post dated it and was complete stitched completely different. Everything. So little update there on Lamar. Um, got who knows what's happening. Who knows what's going on? Maybe we do have a patch swap error. I want to see the laundry tag, like you said. I think that, or and the Nike swoosh, really. I would assume most yeah. have probably been pulled. I want to see if they've been pulled, and I want to. I want to see them now. I think that would go a yeah. long way to answering this question. But more questions from a uh, now infamous 2018 National Treasures Lamar Jackson set. <laughs> All right. Well, now moving on. We're going to skip ahead uh, five years to 2023. Yep. And we're going to be talking about something that doesn't, in, another scandal that doesn't involve Panini. No, we're going over to the top side, my friend. This one is interesting. So back in April, yep. somebody posted and then quickly deleted a photo of some autograph, some non-autograph, Bowman Chrome and Topps Chrome cards from 2023 sets mm -hmm. prospects rookies the yeah. whole you know, and the whole a mojo world. there was uh tops chrome bowman chrome bowman draft and uh the megas so all of the different sets yeah i didn't see the bowman draft in there i didn't think those were i didn't think those had been it uh, might not be draft it might no. just be chrome i think it's yeah i think it's just chrome but there's one there was a super fractor in there there was, yeah. there was a whole bunch of stuff so that got deleted very quickly but somebody fortunately got a hold of a screenshot and it has recently come back to light again. Yes, it has. Um, the original post had eight cards, and it said, got friended these, no clue what they are or worth. Now, the obvious, this was posted to Reddit, deleted, like you said, almost immediately, but everyone's going to catch it, So, yeah. especially Nothing card gets, collectors. Guys, 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 I just want to point out, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's cards or anything else, nothing, yeah, no. nothing ever is deleted from the internet no never ever nothing nope think about that before you put something out there that's my no, that's my internet that's my internet safety tip of the week <laughs> no 100 percent. okay so 
all of these cards had been stolen and it, or well not we we assume but these cards all popped up on reddit automatically deleted well a couple of days ago and now it's gaining a lot of traction now that tops chrome is out and that bowman's been out for a while they've been tracking these and doing a little research on these and all of the players that had these cards that were taken all were in arizona for the fall league which is when a lot of these cards are signed for spring training and as they've been out so far, we have not yet seen a Colin Palouse True Gold, a Yanir Fernandez Orange Shimmer, or a Kumar Rocker Mojo autograph on the secondary market pulled from a box, which are the exact same parallels that this person has. And if you look at some of the autographs, they look like different pens and everything. So this looks like a backdoor, some type of backdoored situation. But I have a theory on this, but I want to know... Your thoughts on this initially? You know, I'm not entirely sure what to think of this. Obviously, oh, you know, the seller see... was also based out of Arizona. Some well, of these sold on eBay. <laughs> so here's the thing: when you see when you see cards that should have an autograph on them that are not autographed, it's never a good never a good sign. No, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like, okay, we somebody pilfered them. They you know grab their their little five finger discount. Yeah. The question is where because there's right. a lot of places along you know, the, let's call it the chain of custody for these yeah. cards where stuff could disappear. And, and, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's my screen. Maybe it's the, uh, you know, I, I can't read the names on some of the, the cards that are, that are there. Um, obviously there's a, you know, the Kumar rocker mojo mm -hmm. uh, from Bowman mega box that is not autographed yet, but it's and then you've got the Nelson Rada, the gold, which if you look at his, you have one that, people think is allegedly stolen and then one graded by PSA that okay. was, uh, that there's a record of it being pack pulled. The See, I don't have, I don't have that different. one in my, I don't have that one in my picture. I've the got pens look completely yeah. different, but they are, it's absolutely a real Bowman card. So it, these were, okay. So when they do spring training signings and stuff like this, cause that's when a lot of these cards for Bowman tops, Chrome and all this stuff, especially with younger guys are signed because they're all there in centralized locations, all the teams, all these players being in Arizona, the seller of some of these cards who sold some of the purple sparkles was from Arizona. And we haven't seen any of these come up. Well, when these signings happen, not all of it is done by tops or at no. least not in the past stuff is contracted out to people that work in the industry. I know someone that was somebody that did not work for tops, but absolutely was a top to witness. Like he was one of the people that would be considered a, an actual witness of the cards being signed. And he was hired to do this during the exact same time period. So a lot of times this stuff is contracted out. It's normally younger people. It's normally guys in college, right out of college. That's the guy I knew, right out of college. And I think we have a problem when it comes to that stuff here. I think people are getting these jobs knowing what these cards are worth. And I think some people can't help themselves when they're carrying stacks of this type of stuff, knowing the value that it is, especially knowing all these guys are here. You can take the cards Go yep. right up to the wall and have them sign it with the pen of your choice. And they're not going to look twice at it. They're not paying attention to what they're signing when they're signing 800 things in a fall league. Yeah. You can get these guys at any time to sign that card. And obviously they're going to sign it where they're used to signing an autograph on a card. So you're going to get it pretty close to perfect every single time you try. And if you don't like it, you can wipe it and try again in this case. Well, here's so here's my my biggest question is if these people, you know, if, if it is people that are contracted to witness the signings, why are they not just snagging the card after the athlete just signs it in the normal signing anyway? Well, it might be the chain of command. It may be something okay. to do with the fact that after they're signed, they're immediately handed to tops. You know what I mean? I don't know the exact process. Well, but if, that, if that's knows. the case, then top, then tops would be there to witness it, because if they're immediately handed to tops, somebody from tops would have to be there to hand it to. Well, you would think they would take it before they set it down in front of the athlete. I'm just saying there's got to be some chink in the chain of command for these cards to get out because this isn't, I do not at all think these cards were taken from the factory. 
Because if so, you'd see people from all the different areas. The fact yeah. that this was all Arizona Fall League-based teams posted right in April, and then these things start coming up. This was stuff taken from those signings, and I think Tops knew about it. I, I think they have to, especially when there's a super fractor involved. You have to know when a super fractor comes up, yeah. uh, where is it? You have to know. And so... If Tops knows about it, they need to address this shit. Yeah, and now and this is out a there, they need to address it immediately. And by the way, the superfractor is a 2023 Tops Chrome superfractor. Right. So, and it is I can't read the name on this picture, but it's a Royals player, uh, yeah. and it's not a pitcher. So, if you're going to, uh, you know, if you're buying into breaks, looking for you know the superfractor auto of the yeah, like I said, I can't I can't tell whose who's name that is, but it's definitely a hitter for the Royals and uh, you know if you so if you're buying the Royals know that hey look that one's yeah. not that's super that, fractor might super not fractor's be in not there. in there because it got taken yep you know same thing and we don't know like you said how many uh, I think there there's a couple of colors from Kumar Rocker that have not been pulled out of the 2023 Bowman product that we know of right oh yeah no no that so um, far I'm looking again right now and I don't see any yet yeah, and there's and obviously one. I mean, e even like a red number to five, one of yeah. those would have been sold, or somebody would have posted one. The Kumar Rocker that's in this picture here is the Mojo Refractor. Uh, yeah, I, I see no Megamox, autographs but. of his um, from that sold, and so I see an orange uh, Mojo. I see an orange Mojo, but not an actual regular base, base Mojo, and also. There's been they've been tracking the Yanir Fernandez orange shimmers. None of his orange shimmers have sold, but an orange has a red has a red shimmer, all of that. But none of the orange shimmers, which is the card pictured, have yeah. shown up on the secondary market yet. And with the amount of with the you know, with the quantity of product that has been opened, you would think at least one of the orange shimmers would have shown up on the secondary market. Yep. And these guys that are tracking this, I mean, this is the this is the blowout detectives again. Yep. Um 100 mm percent These guys do these guys do like an absolutely phenomenal job. And also um, shout out to uh Dan the Cardman. Also, he uh, a lot of he does a lot of research on this as well and has helped shine a light on uh this also. Yeah, so but like I said, you would think that with all the product that's been open, at least one of the 25 of the orange shimmers would have popped up. And these are the again autos. Now the one that's in the picture here is not signed yet. Right. Uh, so I see there's yeah, so there's one, two, three, there's four of the eight cards in the picture that I have that are not signed, and the other three of them are. So was it uh there's a gold Bowman Gold Colin Police? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, I believe From I believe so. Pitcher for the A's. It looks like it's serial number one out of fifty. Uh that one is not signed in the picture from April. Yeah. And Caleb Gillian rookie uh, tops Chrome is not signed. Well, but again, that is a I'm not I'm trying not to get into the tops Chrome stuff because that doesn't release until the 26th. Yeah. So we don't you know, we don't really know what, what's going on with that. The ball. Yeah. I mean, but there is it looks like a purple speckle auto of Levon Soto mm -hmm. uh, serial number looks like 42. Yeah. 42. Is that a zero in front of the four? Yeah, it's got to be. So it's 42. You know, so Spencer Steen looks yeah. like a blue. That's a blue lava refractor. Yeah. From Topps Chrome. So, uh, I mean, there's all sorts of, I mean, there's all sorts of things that we just don't, we just don't know the answer to. No, but, but it's something that Topps needs to address. And that's where I'm, I want to go to with this because, okay, we, we can speculate on how they got these out. But the fact is Topps had to have known, especially with the super fractor. That's, that's what yeah. I have an issue with is when, when you see one of the one of ones, a damn super fractor and tops Chrome, there ain't that fucking many of them. Um, there's, you know, you, you have to know that this happened. There's no way these, all of these got out and considering none of the orange shimmers, if, if you're missing an entire run yeah. of cards from a player, yep. you have to know. And so did you replace them and put them in boxes for a, for the second run? Are we not going to see them pop up until the second, you know, uh, distribution comes out because they weren't in the first half? Tops needs to let people know this shit. We can't let these companies keep having this stuff happen and not address yeah. it. Yeah. Like, and what they and let, let's let's just let's just say that all of those orange shimmers 
were, you know, were pilfered. All yeah. 25 of them were, were taken. They've got to do something. If they're going to replace it and have them re-signed or, or whatever, they've got to do something. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it's something of like uh, putting an A at the end of the serial number. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's like one yeah. out of 25 A. a. And right. that way, you know that if you got, if you have an A, that yeah. it's the one that's pack pulled, it's the legit one. But if there's no A, then that's the one that was stolen you know, from the signing yeah. or before it was signed. I like that. Or, it's a good idea. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's one of those things where it's like, okay, you can, you can do this. Like the same thing, this, that's super fractor that is, that's there. So either you can do one of two things with that. You can either change the image, yeah. you know, use a slightly different image right. for it and reproduce it and just make it one or, or make it one of one a, yeah. And that's, and you just put out a statement saying these cards were missing. We never got them returned. Yeah. Uh, if you that would actually one, help the cards that are actually real probably hold more value because there's a story behind them. Exactly. The story is, is so, it, despite what people might think, because a lot of people are just in here to just buy cards, hit something big and sell it. The story matters on a lot of this. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> but here's, but here's what I want to know. So these are getting, so they get signed, they get returned to tops. And now I'm not saying, you know, cause a lot of these, a lot of these guys signed like thousands of the base autos. Oh, yeah. So I'm not saying you need to go through and count all the base autos, no. but at least count all the serial numbered stuff and make sure you have all the serial numbers, make right. sure that they're all there and they're all returned. Now, and I know now, it's difficult because they make a 500 card rainbow these days, but tough shit. You're the guys yeah. printing all the parallels. Well, but they'll look, you got fanatics that owns the company. There's got to be some, you know, some shipping clerk somewhere that they can yeah. bring into the office and, you know, and say, hey, make sure these are in order. Make sure yeah. they're all there. Anything that's not there, you let us know. Mm -hmm. um, they could hire an intern for this. Yeah. You know, hey, I've always wanted to work for a card company and I'm just finishing up college and yeah. I need an internship. So, yep. you know, hey, look here, you're going to sit in a room, you're going to count cards yep. and you're going to make sure that they're all there. And that, you know, and that's that's what you're going to do that, you know, hey, and. We'll pay you minimum wage or whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> I mean, hell, there's people that would do it not even – and would, wouldn't even – you wouldn't even need to pay them. I know. Yeah. It's not that difficult. No. But they do need to address the situation, you know, oh, especially with some of the cards that are, you know, that are shown. And, and look, this can't be it. There's got to be more. Well, that's my point. There And there's – there is if you guys want to check it out on Reddit, uh, and I'll blow out. So obviously picked it up. I have a feeling a lot more – this is a developing story is – it just picked up steam in the last 24 hours or so, but because now some of this stuff is being sold and some has been out long enough. And now that tops Chrome is releasing, it's really picking up, but I'm sure a lot is going to come out here, but I mean, even some that aren't in the pictures, there definitely are more because the Nelson rod of gold is not in the picture and yeah. it has been allegedly stolen because the pens are 1000% Two completely different companies, two completely different types. So and it looks like, yeah, I mean, it looks like some, I mean, somebody used a Sharpie on it. Right. When we know that they don't use Sharpies to do these signings, they use the Stabler exactly. markers. But that would be exactly what you would have at, uh, while you're standing there trying to get them to sign before a game. Well, not me. No, uh, not I was. Bring, <laughs> I always bring. I always bring but, the Stadlers. Um, yeah, but most I mean, pe yeah. most people and they hold up. They hold up better long term on you know on on cards and things like that. Yeah. But the you know this, yeah this is one of those things where like Tops really needs to come out and address it, especially if a lot of this stuff isn't in the product. And well, look, we know we we know sometimes that there are some athletes that do tend to keep some of their higher value stuff that the card companies tend. Oh yeah, you know, send them a sign. Got it a lot. Be honest. Be honest. Yeah, yeah. Giannis. Yeah, Giannis, um, Giannis, fucking Zach Ryder, Matt Cardona, whatever his name is. Matt Cardona, hell, he admitted it on his podcast that he keeps the valuable ones for fuck's sake. Well, Giannis all but admitted it when he posted well, yeah, a when picture he posted of his freaking collection. Yeah, I'll um, never let people forget that because I screen grabbed it too. I post it every year just as a reminder that fucking Giannis steals his own shit. Yeah, I mean that's that's on your calendar just like just like Bobby Bonilla Day is on yes. your calendar to post on July first yes. every year. This is one of those things that you to remind you Giannis that the internet never forgets. Just yeah. like your public service announcement from earlier. Yeah, exactly. So, but I, I think in this situation, I don't think it's the athletes. No, no, this, this is stuff. not the athletes. This was and this was either someone contracted out or someone that, that used to work at Tops or something that got these out, gave them to somebody, and that person 
accidentally, you can tell whoever posted on Reddit was told immediately to take it down. So it seems like it was a little operation to get these out. Yeah. But, but tops needs, like, like I said, tops needs to address it. And look, if they don't know, then say you don't know. Yeah. But you have to and say that you will look into it, but you have to address it. Right. Now, here's not keep going on. on here's here's a question that I have, though, is did tops put redemption cards in the products yeah. for any of these missing cards? And if that's the case, and it looks at tops traditionally has been very good about redemptions. Yeah, they have, you know, but look, occasionally they have one that, you know, just takes forever or whatever. But uh as a general rule, they're usually pretty good. They're not panini when it comes yeah. to redemptions. But are any of these redemptions in, in well, the products? There, there haven't been any of the uh, still not. If they put Yanir Fernandez, for example, if they put his his orange shimmer, no redemptions have popped up yet. But we all yeah. know that they do multiple runs of these cards. Could they start showing up at the end? You know, could they could they have figured it out and said, oops, and then started to put redemptions or something in during the subsequent print, uh, print runs that come out, you know, because there are distribution waves in these. Products. Well, there's distribution waves, but the printing is all done at once. Right. So yeah. They, they yeah. would have so had like, yeah. reprinted them. They would have right, had yeah. reprinted them. Um, but th but we need to know if they know and if they did know and we need to know what what's going on because like you said when it comes to royals i know they're not one of the biggest teams in breaks this year or anything like that but there's a damn super fractor in there like one of the biggest chase cards when it comes to buying texas in any bowman texas has a massive farm system yeah. they go for big money knowing that damn kumar rockers mojo autos couldn't be in there and all and or if you're chasing the dodgers fernandez's orange shimmers and and who knows what else yeah, all aren't in there. I mean, what what the hell? You know, I mean, obviously, all of them weren't taken from all of them because Nelson Rod is gold. That shows that maybe they only got some of the golds and not all of them, but they definitely got some of them. But how many? I'm waiting to see if a duplicate serial number eventually pops up. Maybe that'll give us an answer. But the fact is, a lot of this stuff hasn't been ripped yet, and a lot of this stuff probably hasn't been pulled yet. But a very interesting story, nonetheless. Yeah, I'm curious as to how this is going to happen. And again, knowing that a lot of these cards that are, you know, that were shown were Tops Chrome, which yeah. releases on opening day at the National. Yep. I mean, it's I'm, I'm going to be curious because it's not it's not like one of those things where like product releases in April and yeah. you know, in order to get a hold of somebody at Tops, you've got to send an email, wait for a reply, mm -hmm. or pick up the phone, and they forward you to somebody, you leave a voicemail, whatever. No. Tops is there. Yeah. And They're no, five out there. of the eight cards that were pictured on the original post were Tops Chrome. <laughs> right. And this is this is not a situation. You remember 2019 National, you know, Tops made 204 cards for Tops Chrome so they can fit in the Alonzo and the Eloy and the Tatis and the Vlad yeah. Jr. And they the print shop that cut the cards cut them slightly short. And they didn't even they didn't realize it. So the first couple that went to Beckett and to Panini for slabbing right away were rejected as being trimmed. Yeah. And then Tops came out and said, no, 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 no. The factory cut it short. And so here's the here are the measurements that those four cards should be. And now all of a sudden, like, OK, they're great. They're fine. There's no issues. They need to take care of this before that, because I'm also curious yeah. as to how many of these cards that were backdoored are, you know, sitting at PSA. Well, obviously, they. They couldn't. The Bowman stuff might be a PSA or Beckett or SGC right now, but the the Topps Chrome stuff, there might be somebody who's going to bring him to the national. Yeah, well, and this is really interesting. The listing has been removed, but a 2023 Topps Chrome Levon Soto Purple Speckle Refractor at a 299. Soto being one of the guys pictured in those eight cards. One of his Purple Speckle autos sold on April 11th. Right when this stuff was posted, well before Topps Chrome has come out yet, and the listing has now been pulled down by eBay. So, Interesting. So it's not. So even though it's sold, it's still. It it was. You can still see it if you filter for sold listings. Type in Levon Soto Topps Chrome Purple, and uh, filter into sold, and you can see it. But when you click on it, it says the listing has been removed. But in April, when this photo was taken. 
a Topps Chrome card from a product that doesn't release until the end of this month was sold. Interesting. So, yeah, and and obviously no more have shown up since then. But it only it sold for seventeen fifty plus five dollars shipping, probably because no one was looking for it because they had no clue that it had come out yet. So one of these cart, one of these topped Chrome autos, they were actually dumb enough to even send it or even sell it before the product came out. So it seems like they they kind of jumped the gun a little bit on that. Um, but it looks like these were definitely signed, at least some of them, before April eleventh, because one of those topped Chrome cards sold. On April 11th, the purple speckle at a 2.99 of Levon Soto, who just happens to be one of the guys in that photo. Interesting, and looking at it, is, and it's a different serial number. Yep, than the one that's pictured in the photo. Now, here's the thing: so it only sold for 17.50. Well, no, I'm searching for 2023 tops Chrome. No, that's true. But you, why are you searching for Levon Soto rookie autos when you don't have any yet from tops Chrome? Oh, yeah. No, and that's, you know what, that's why I'm not finding it is because the listing didn't say auto. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I I was just looking for that, and I'm like, I couldn't find it. And mm -hmm. now, yeah, 1750 there we go. Yeah, and um, if you click on it, the listing's removed. Listing so someone removed, reported, yeah. someone has reported it in the last couple of days, I'm guessing. Yeah, that is, that is true. But you can, you can zoom in on the, on the image close enough, serial number 186 out of 299. Yep. So did they get the entire run? Did they just get some... Well, they, they got given, given that the serial number that we saw on the original picture was 42 out of 299, yeah. then that would be that would be something that would be a hate. large chunk of them. It could be. It could be a large chunk. Could be all. It could be. You know, who knows? Yeah. Um, but this, like I said, this is something Tops needs to address big time because I mean, especially with one already being sold, I think. They should have been addressed as soon as they knew one had sold in April. But that means they're obviously aware of it because someone definitely pointed this out if it's been removed. And now they're definitely aware of it no matter what. And so I hope they come out and say something because even though the Levon Toto only sold for that much money, it's because no one was searching for those cards yet because they didn't exist. But some of these, like a Super Fractor, could be quite expensive. So I'd like oh, exactly. to say something. I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see if, yeah, I want to know who the seller was on that. Yeah, but we can't get into the no nope. listing. Yeah, we can't removed. get into the listing. Listing's been removed. It's yeah. I'm wondering if that entire seller account got removed. Yeah, it'd be. So. It, I, I have no idea, but um, you know, it, it's definitely something we're going to follow. We'll update everybody if we get any new information. But uh, as as like I said, this is a very developing story. We're kind of hitting this and recording right when a lot of this information is dropping and a, a lot of new information is dropping literally by the hour. So uh, we'll probably update you guys next week on something on this, because like I said, some of these cards could be quite valuable and quite expensive. So we'll uh, yeah, we'll see what uh, what comes of that. And speaking of expensive. Yes. Our bills are expensive. Damn straight. It's time to pay them. We'll be back after this. All right. We're back. Thanks for putting up with the nonsense that is advertising these days. Yes. So we are going to stick with tops in the yeah. second half of the show, but we're going to talk about something that's actually fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. So a couple weeks back, there was a picture that uh, Victor Wembanyama posted of him with a green uh, Bowman U card number to 99 and said my first auto ever. Yep. Or something along those, my first auto ever or something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Super Fractor got pulled, and mm -hmm. it actually looks different. I think it's a, I think it's a parallel Super Fractor. It, it's from Bowman's uh, Best. A ball, okay, that, so the Bowman's yeah. Best Super Fractor got pulled, and it's a sticker mm -hmm. auto. But in addition to a signature, it also said first ever. Assuming first ever stickers signed. <laughs> yeah, and that's – well, because there's probably not a room on there to put first ever stickers. So. Yeah, exactly. Um. So now we know of at least two Wembenyana cards that he signed. And like I said, I don't know why he didn't do his Bowman U uh, Super Fractor that way. Yeah, I know. Well, may yeah, I know. I know. Maybe he has a special. Maybe he has a special inscription on that, which we'll get into in a minute. And and he might. It hasn't been pulled yet. There's still a ton of the product that's open, or that's that's unopened. And well, his are his are all redemptions. So oh yeah, I guess that, that is be, true. People are going to be getting these as redemptions. It's going to be literally almost. 
top's choice which person gets these outside of the super, you know, but like the greens and stuff. It's, so it's almost going to be top's choice who gets it unless they, pit, you know, just random all of them together and shuffle and blindly pull. Yeah, no, that is uh, that is true. So if you know, so whoever's pulling those recognizes a name. Yeah. Um, you know, that's on there and they get to pick and choose. But I mean, who's to say that that's any you know different than what normally yeah. happens when it comes to like choice serial numbers like jersey number right. or yeah. number one or the last yeah. one, you know. But in this case, it's a little bit different because it has that special inscription on it that mm-hmm. it's his first one ever. And ideally, to whoever pulled the redemption for the green auto, that card is going to go to whoever redeemed it first. Yeah, ideally, I, I would, would hope him. so. I yeah. would hope so. Exactly. Now, so that's cool. So he's throwing those out there. Who knows? Which which also means he's he's probably open to doing all sorts of other inscriptions. So who knows what he is going to end up doing on on cards, you know, yeah. in the future. But at the is- same time, in addition to Wemby, Michael uh, Rubin posted a preview little shot from his phone. Looks like Tom Brady shot him a photo as he was signing his stuff that's going to be in the upcoming Bowman product. And he had an inscription on his one of one that says, if it doesn't work out, there's always football. Now, wait, was that the one of one that looked like a gold? Um, I believe it's a parallel uh, set where the gold is the one of one. I'm not sure. Oh, OK. Because yeah, I, I believe the, um... it was one of his side like insert sets. I'm not sure. I was I've seen some that said it was a one of one. It looked like a gold. You can't see the serial number, no. but you can see the inscription. Well, and that's so, one of those. The serial number on those, I think, is usually on the back. Yeah. Um, but what this is telling me is that Tops is 100 percent going the inscription route because to have two of the biggest, you know, and most popular athletes right now coming out with inscriptions and new products, they're definitely heavily going to do this moving forward. I think oh, you're going to start to see a lot of this. Yeah. And we already knew that Brady was going to have an auto in Bowman draft. Yes. Uh, this year that was announced, a, you know, a long time ago. That oh, yeah. We knew that was coming, but the fact that, you know, he's willing to play ball and, and do yes. this kind of stuff. Now we also, we also don't know if he was asked by tops to throw an inscription on there or if he just thought it was funny. Yeah. And that, that's just the thing. We don't know. Because Brady, so Brady has always been one of those guys, like he has a sense of humor. Yes, he does. He absolutely has a sense of humor, yes. but he doesn't he doesn't show it a lot. No, 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 he, no, no. You know, he's known as like the serious guy, the doesn't joke around, he's always down to business, that kind of stuff. But he's got a sense of humor, yeah, with non-offensive things. Right. And you know, it goes, look, my sense of humor is completely different from Brady's sense of humor, right? But to see him do this, I, I wouldn't put it past him to have done that on his own and then send send Ruben the you know the picture of it and yeah. be like, you know, ha ha, this is this is coming. Yeah, because he is retired now, you know. When he was playing, I doubt I doubt he would do that. I doubt he'd have time, you know. And but now that he is retired, having a little bit more fun, that personality of his is coming out a lot more. Like you're seeing that side of Tom Brady. Well, we, we use and, see. and I, I just want to point out we use the we use air quotes when we say retired because look, look, he's retired from football, but the dude's got his hand in so many different yes, businesses yes, yes, and yes. things like that. Yes. He is most certainly not retired. retired. Right. Right. But I'm saying, you know, he has a little bit more time than when he's, when I think he's in football mode, when I think it's all business. And so I think he's having, a, maybe he was just having a little fun with this, but I find I it interesting that he puts a massive inscription on it. And then Wemby, does the inscriptions as well now maybe this was on both of the athletes maybe this is something that tops is trying to push with some of the stars well i can see tops pushing it with wemby he's you know he's young well so he's he's one of those guys where it's like all right well if we start him doing this stuff now he's one of the most yeah he's one of the most hype prospects ever right but if we like look i i can see the the thinking there look if we start him with these inscriptions now he's going to think that this is normal and we can get him to do it forever yep Brady, on the other hand, no. nobody tells Tom Brady what to do. Hell no. And Tom Brady does a lot for inscriptions. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen, but it, it's Tom, expensive. Tom Brady does whatever the hell Tom Brady wants to do. I'll agree with that. And and that's, you know, that's the thing where it's like, I think I think Wemby might have been told to, you know, throw those on there. Oh, I, I especially I 100% think so. especially not being from the U.S. Yes. And, you know, and look, the card market is 
all you know i mean look it's worldwide it is but it is not as big in europe as it is in the united states right so i could see him you know getting a little coaxing and saying hey let's let's put this on there but brady on the other hand brady knows the card market is huge he's been signing you know he's been signing them for you know oh he knows what his cards sell for they make national headlines exactly he could and and this is one that i think will this is one of those cards that whoever hits it if they hit it you never know may end up in anton griezmann's hand <laughs> <laughs> right yeah it yeah. easily could yeah, especially especially now that uh uh-huh. yeah but, right, the you know whoever winds up with this card i mean that's i'm not going to say it's a seven figure card but i still i still think it is a i, I think it's i think it becomes a six figure card oh oh 100% that that's a massive massive card i, I think it, even without the inscription if it's a one of one, uh, like some people were saying, then I think it would probably fetch near that period. But you add in the inscription like that. Oh, no, this card just went through the roof because if you look, like I said, if you look at Tom Brady inscriptions, a signing is expensive enough. Any inscription, even if it's just SBMVP, five letters, yep. that's haunt, that's a lot of money. And yeah. So, it's a it's a crazy amount of money. I know. In fact, I look. I know somebody. I haven't talked to him about this particular card, but I know somebody who is going to most likely go after this card. Yeah, and is probably willing to spend a six figure sum yep. to get this card. Oh, I've got someone in mind too. <laughs> yeah, and it's probably two. To, you and I probably have two different people in mind as well, yeah. and that's the you know the thing. So we know that there's going to be competition for this particular yep. card. But that, I mean, that alone is, it's, I wish more guys would do stuff like this. I really do. Well, that's what I'm saying. I hope Tops is, I I hope Tops and Fanatics are pushing these guys to say, hey, if you can do any inscriptions, you know, not pushing and saying you have to or anything like that, but saying, you know, be creative with it. Have fun with it. I hope the people at Panini are because I think it's something that. No, not Panini. Tops. 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 This is Tops, not Panini. I know yeah, we're talking no, no, football, dang. we're talking Tom Brady, but you know, we're talking, yeah, we're talking yeah. tops. Right. But I'm saying any company, I want, I want them to encourage the athletes to have fun with it. And I think a lot more are, and I think, I think these inscriptions are being pushed on by tops. Like I, I especially in the Wemby section, like you said, um, I wonder, I would love, I will know for sure if tops can get him to say, uh, First card post Britney. <laughs> if we can get his signature eventually, <laughs> that would be. Yeah, I mean, that would be awesome. I if mean, he, come on. It, if he it, pulled it, that out, uh, or or maybe to make it up to Britney, he says, "Hey, let's you know, come on over to my love place, you, let's have drinks." Something. Yeah, and then wait, but then here's the kicker: as he's signing cards, have her sign one of them as well. Now that would be sweet. That, that would be, be a cool one. one. Uh, that would be a sweet one. Michael see. Rubin needs to be getting on the phone with Brittany right now. Dual autos. And she'll look, name. she'll do it. Oh, she'll easily do it. She'd do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. So, but like I said, that, I mean, there's kind of a scandal behind that. And like I, said, yeah, I, I, I just I, don't know, you know, the, the thing, but um, that would be a cool one to have. <laughs> so I, I like it. I like it when the athletes kind of do it on their own. The bet, you know, we'll call so it the. The Benny Montgomery style. Right. That's how it's going to be forever known is the Benny Montgomery style. Yep. And I'd still love to see, I still want to see a Ricky Henderson card inscribed John 316. <laughs> yeah. And there's there a, you do you know the story behind that? No. So somebody was trying to preach to Ricky and brought up John 316. And Ricky just looks at him and goes, I don't care about John hitting no 316. Ricky hit <laughs> Ricky hitting 324. <laughs> <laughs> so somewhere or i just want to say to ricky three colon 24 there that would be go. that would be a great one to put on there like you know just you know the fun stuff the, yeah i'd love to see yeah i'd love to see the guys do you know more of those fun inscriptions and things like that and i'm glad and i'm glad brady's jumping on the train with this one no no so am i i and i think you know i i do think the hobby always embraces it i think inscriptions are a cool way to you know, add some more value and differentiate some of these cards when, like we said, there's so many cards in a rainbow, things like that. Having these special extra chase cards type of deal, it's awesome. And, and I hope a lot of athletes fall suit. And as the athletes and organizations get more involved and closer and intertwined with cards, I think they're going to be more aware of the market. And so, I mean, that's the hope. 
The fanatics yeah. and tops are bringing the players closer than ever. So hopefully they learn the market more than ever. And some of them see what some of the other players do and say, hey, I got a cool idea too. And hopefully we can have some fun with this. Yeah, and we know we know a couple of the baseball prospects have uh, have jumped on the inscription train after yep. seeing what you know what Benny has done. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think look from now on we're just gonna we're just gonna call this kind of stuff the the Benny Montgomery way, yeah, or Benny Benny style, yeah, ben, Benny style, there Benny style. Benny there we go. Uh, hey, how you signing the cards? And then I'm doing it Benny style. Doing it Benny style. At least yeah. one Benny style. Exactly. You know, draw a picture, have fun with it. Yeah. You know, uh, sing a song. Know. Sing a song. <laughs> the so Benny and Jen. Yeah. So I look, I'm I'm excited to see what you know what some of these guys can do. Especially now, like you get a lot of these prospects that come up that you know have been collectors themselves for you know the last decade or, yeah. or two, and they know the market, they know what's going on, and it's something that the, the companies are gonna allow. Yeah, I completely agree. It's gonna be interesting to see, but uh a really cool one out there with Wemby and Brady both putting out some really cool inscriptions in the same week. Well, Ruben teasing the Brady during not during his filthy, ridiculous white party that Grant Williams somehow got invited to. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh he did tease it during another one of his uh Instagram post the awesome Tom Brady inscription and Wemby doing it with his Bowman's best first sticker auto signature. All right. So before we wrap up the show, yes, we have something big coming up at the end of the month. We do. And by we, I don't mean like you and I, no. I don't mean like, you know, our families or right. anything like that. No, yeah. I mean, all of us. Yes. Of course, we're talking about the National Sports Collectors Convention starting Woo! July 26th in Chicago. And at some point, we're going to have Ray Schulte back on to talk about the National and what to expect and things like that. But we've been to, well, I've been to more than I can count. I know you've been to all of them since 2018, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because uh, that's where you and I first met was in Cleveland in 2018. Yeah, that was my first one, 2018. That was your first one? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I've been going and I remember them in like, uh, my first one was like 92 or 93 or something like that. So it's, you know, we see a lot of things and we've seen a lot of things right. that people do. People make mistakes, people, you know, things people should do when going yeah. to the national. So we're going to, we're going to talk about a couple of those just to get you ready. Like, Hey, start prepping for it. These are the things over the next couple of weeks that you need to start thinking about before you pack your bags and come to Chicago. Or in my case, Wake up in the morning. Wake and, up in the know, morning. Roll yeah. out. To, roll yeah. out to the convention center for the day. So jealous of that, by the way. Oh, but, dude, yeah. you have yeah. Uh, having it here every two years is an awesome, awesome thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, and know. Charlotte's never getting it, so I, I'll just let you. I'll, I'll live vicariously through you in that one, and just. But even but even then, you're far enough away from Charlotte where you're still gonna have to stay in a hotel. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, it's for me um you know literally it's a 20 minute drive to the convention center and life is good for you yes the national man it, it the and and that is, it's important for people especially if it's going to be your first time going which uh we did announce our winner of the first contest by the way for national tickets and we have our n- other contest up right now so make sure to get into it we do have two daily ticket passes up for a giveaway but that it is if you're going for your first time or even if you're going for your second or third, there's a lot of things that look, I, I've been to quite a few and every single one I've been to, I've worked. Yeah. So I've, I've seen it from a lot of different angles and there, there are a lot of things that people need to know. And I always say the, the number one biggest thing for me is always wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> okay. That's That is a good one. Yeah. The um, not, so the corporate area is usually carpeted and padded. Yes. The non-corporate area, which makes up the bulk of the convention center, is concrete floors. Yeah. And and it's bigger than ever this year. <laughs> uh, yes. And yeah, Ray Ray will talk. You know, touch on that when we when we get him on. But it is absolute hell on your back mm-hmm. walking those concrete floors in non-comfortable shoes. So yep. yes, that's a good one. My biggest one. This is my absolute biggest one deodorant i knew it <laughs> and personal I hygiene <laughs> i swear to god i you wind up walking past somebody who smells like they haven't showered in two weeks and yep. it just like seriously take a shower oh, no. yeah please wear wear deodorant change your socks change your underwear yes you know 
seriously, be even if it's only one week out of the year that you do it, please do it this yeah, week. Be considerate of other people. Yeah. You know, the other the other stuff, obviously, it's look, plan. You know, the Big the map, time. the map, and it look, there's no shame in having a map of the floor. Dude, I have it on my phone and yeah. I have but and in my notes. I, I I make an entire spreadsheet in my notes that includes a photo of the map, boosts that I want to hit, key yep. boosts and where they are. Like I go into crazy detail because especially working the show, and if you're working it for the first time, this is crazy important. You might not hit the whole floor at the show. No. Last year I did not see two thirds of the floor because of the job I was doing that year. This year, thankfully, it's different, and I will see the whole show. Yeah, but you might not get to see it all, and it can be crazy overwhelming to try and remember everything. Yep. So th- there's no shame in having a map. No, Hell, no shame I have in having one, a map. and I I literally have a plan of attack for where yep. I'm going. And, when and that's I'm where I that's where I was going next. You know, if you look in a lot of the chat groups and things like that. All the dealers that are going to be there will post their table numbers and things like that. Mm-hmm. And the guys that you interact with on a regular basis, you know who they are. You write write down where they're at on the map in the table. That way you know where things are. Mm-hmm. Um, keep a little notebook, you know, yeah. uh, write down the table number and the dealer of who you like. You know, you saw a card that you liked. Your main band may not be ready to buy it right now, but in an hour you might be ready after you, you know, look around a little bit. Now it may not be there when you come back. That was going to be one thing I was going to say, but you know, you all, you know, you know that, Hey, look, this is where I saw it. This was the, you know, the case that I had it in. And I mean, shit, this is the guy's name. Um, You know, all that stuff. What, look, if it's got a price sticker on it, write down what, you know, what price it and, you know, don't, don't, you know, be afraid to negotiate a little bit. Some dealers will, some dealers won't. Yeah, and the ones that are firm on their price, they'll tell you, you know, hey, sorry, man, I don't have any more room. I got this is what I gotta get on it. Yeah, bring bring cards. Oh, you know, one thousand percent bring you cards. Know, a lot of the dealers buy. In fact, the vast majority of them will probably buy. But at the same time, let's say you know you see that uh, that card that the dealer's not going to budge on the price, but you have got something in your bag that you might want, and you say, hey, you opened up part cash, part trade. And all of a sudden, that gives you a little bit more room. And at a show like the National, when it's so long, dealers are very open to that. Because if it's something that they think, hey, I can get and move this weekend, yep, they're absolutely open to that. Because that's more for them. You know, yep. so it definitely, I see, so I do and have seen so many cash card deals you absolutely have to bring your own cards but on one of the notes that you said right there when you were talking about you know write down cards that you see one of my biggest tips was don't wait too long if it's a card you really want write down that booth and maybe you know walk the floor and see everything but don't expect it to be there on sunday too no exactly there's something that you really want you got to pull the trigger and you got to do that stuff pretty quick because i missed out on a lot last year by thinking okay the the, there's no way this is going to be gone before friday or saturday i'll I'll hit him up later on in the week maybe he's willing to budge no the card ends up gone exactly especially if it's a hot card you know those even though there may be a ton of them floating around the room like the price may be right for you but you got to go sell some stuff off to get the cash for it you know whatever you you know whatever you you know are thinking in that case that might be gone now i'm i very act i i very rarely actively look for certain cards but i am looking for two cards they're the same player they're both 2013 Bowman Paco Rodriguez autos. I'm looking for the <laughs> red and I am looking for the super fractor. And I'm going to tell you now that if I see those in a case, yeah, those are two cards that I, I can wait on because yes. I guarantee no, you, you can wait on those. Yeah. I guarantee yeah. you those will be there come yes. Sunday. I agree. Um, I agree with you there, you know, but it's, it's one of those things. And it's about, look, if the price is right, I'll buy it right away. Yeah. And I know I know where they should be price wise, and and I just need them to complete the rainbow. Yeah. And you know, I back in 2013, I stocked. I got a ton of orange. I got a ton of gold. I got a ton of blue, but I couldn't get the red. I couldn't find a red. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I couldn't find the super factor. And at the time, somebody wanted way too much money for the red. Right. And you know, there's four others out there, and plus the super somewhere along the line that you know. I'm hoping it shows up at, at the show. 
Um, otherwise, I'm giving up hope and I'm never going to find them. <laughs> but those those are two cards that, that I can wait on. You know, if you're uh, but if you're looking for that Ellie De La Cruz Bowman Chrome Auto. Yeah. Um, yeah, I picked I, I don't know if I would wait. You know, I don't nope. know if I'd walk around for an hour and, and you know, nope. wait on that one because that's probably going to probably going to go now. Absolutely. Grab it yeah. quick. Bring cash. Yes, I think that's I think you know, that's an excellent one. Most dealers do accept electronic payments, you know, credit card, Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, yeah. you know, whatever. But cash is king. Oh yes. And chances are you might even be able to get a little bit of a discount by mm-hmm. paying cash instead of even if it's only a couple of percent, you know, than than paying through Venmo or Zelle or PayPal. And if you're going to pay with electronic because it's in person, because you're getting you're 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 sending the money, you're taking the card, it's in your hand, you don't have to worry about shipping, you don't have to worry about scammers or anything like that, ask if it's okay to send friends and family. Yep. Some dealers will tell you no. Yes, they do will. not send it friends and family. But mm-hmm. some dealers will tell you yes. Let yeah. the dealer decide how they want it, whether they want it goods, whether they want it friends and family, you know, because again, you don't want to screw up somebody's account by sending it friends and family because you have it in front of you. Right. So there's, you know, there's always that, um, but cash is preferred. No, absolutely. So. And you, like you said, there's a chance that you can get a much better deal. Um, a lot of, a lot of dealers that they see the cash as opposed to a, an electronic transfer are willing to negotiate a little bit sometimes, you know, do things a little different. So exactly. Uh, now, I will say, if you happen to be spending money at any of my clients that I work with, please don't don't spend cash. Use credit card. <laughs> um, but that's you know, like I said, that, that's just a personal thing. That's just this me. Hey, you know, I gotta gotta plug it because um, I, I do make a tiny little bit of money on all that stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so like I said, if it you know credit card, you know, at, at any client of mine, cash at you know other <laughs> other places. <laughs> So, well, guys, we'll give you a ton more tips uh, and stuff like that. We'll be talking a lot more about the national as we uh, approach and get closer. We will have a kind of a home base. We'll be doing a lot. Scott will be walking the floor a lot. We'll be doing a lot of uh, interviews and stuff like that. A lot of special content that we'll get into as we get closer to the show. But we will be based in the corporate area at the Gem Mint Wax Pack uh PSA booth, which is in the corporate area. It's booth 3127. So 3127, if you check out the map, is where we're going to be located as kind of our home base for the week, even though you'll see us all throughout the floor. Yes, I will be primarily walking around. Um, you will see me if, hey, look, if you know what, I, I do take pictures, I do sign autographs. So, you know, anybody wants to, you know, come up and snag a picture with me, that that's awesome. We can, uh, you know, glad to take him with you, except for Tony Dovine. For some reason, he I, I have one picture he posted it on my birthday. I've literally taken like one picture with him over the last like 15 years or something like I that. I took a and picture like, with him at a couple shows. Yeah, ago. I'm, um, sure I'll get, I'm sure I'll get him again soon. Yeah, Tony, Tony. And I just, yeah, not, no, I'm just messing with him. He's Tony's a good friend. He's a, you know, he's a great guy in the industry and things like that. But yeah, so Drew and I are definitely walking around. We're always willing to talk to people, stop us on the floor. Um, Say yeah. hi. Tell us how much you love the show. Tell us how much you hate the show. Yeah. Tell us about things that you would love to see us do differently, and mm-hmm. we will promptly ignore those. <laughs> um, but you know, look, we love interacting with people. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff, a lot of recording, a lot of we may be doing a bunch of live stuff while we're there yeah. because cell signal is going to work. We're going to be able to get data. We're going to, you know, I know, unlike, unlike Atlantic City. So I'm really excited to see everybody out there, and along with Wax Pack at that same booth. Zion Slabs, uh, as well as uh, Show Your Slabs, they're going to be based out of that booth as well. Both yep. uh, sponsors of ours, we're going to give a shout out to them. Uh, you know, go see Clint, go see Corey. Um, Zion's got some amazing cases, and he's probably going to be stocked up uh, with all of them throughout the show. So, oh, he's got some amazing stuff. Plus, the uh, I believe the Mag Pros will be there as well. Uh, nice I get confirmation, but I believe the Mag Pros will be there. Uh, you'll definitely be able to check them out. I believe you'll be able to purchase them. I got to touch base with Clint and double check and let everybody know on those as uh, we have a kind of surprise when those do launch. So I hope those are ready. Um, hopefully they are. But yeah, Zion and Show Your Slabs will both uh, be right there with us. But you'll be able to find us, like I said, at booth 3127. 
Scott, my man, I think this is probably a good time to wrap up this week's show. What do you think? It is a good time to wrap up the show. All right. Well, before we go, do want to thank our awesome sponsors. Of course, Zion Cases, Show Your Slaps, Stand Up Displays, Game Time Cards, Denver Card Shows, Treasure Hunter Sports Cards, Card Ladder, and Slab Strong. Thank you guys so much for everything you guys do for the show. Could not do it without you guys. And uh, until next week, you guys know the deal. Keep ripping those packs, pulling those hits, get in that national giveaway, and we'll see you next week. Peace.